hi everyone up to previous video we completed uh, vegetative morphology now we are going to discuss about reproductive morphology what is reproductive morphology the study of forms and features of reproductive parts of plants like flower fruit and seed called reproductive morphology under reproductive morphology we have to discuss about the flower the fruit and the seed so the very first one is the flower flower known as the reproductive structure found in flowering plants particularly the division angiospermae the biological function of a flower is to affect reproduction usually by providing mechanism for the union of sperm with egg the flower structure contains the plants reproductive organs and its function is to produce seeds through reproduction after fertilization portion of the flower develops into a fruit which contains seeds a flower is modified shoot in which shoot apical meristem changes into floral meristem internodes do not elongate and axis gets condensed and the node floral appendages are found instead of leaves anthology the study of flowers and flowering plants particularly the poems on flowers called anthology floriculture analysis of cultivation of flowers called floriculture the opening of flower bud during the flowering period of plant called anthesis the very next topic is inflorescence the arrangement and distribution of flowers and floral axis or peduncle of a plant is called inflorescence the stalk of inflorescence is known as floral axis or peduncle or inflorescence axis inflorescences are uh, three types such as racemous inflorescence cymose inflorescence and special type of inflorescence the very first one racemous inflorescence in this type peduncle or floral axis grows indefinitely which means continuously on this indefinite or continuous peduncle flowers grows either acropetal or centripetal manner acropetal manner in this type younger flowers are present towards the apex or top and the older flowers are present at the base centripetal here in this type peripheral flowers are older or matured flowers the center region flowers are younger or which are going to mature racemous inflorescences are of seven types number 1 raceme number 2 carim number 3 umbel number 4 spike number 5 catkin number 6 spadix number 7 head inflorescence or capitulum number 1 raceme raceme inflorescence again classified into two types number 1 simple raceme number 2 compound raceme the very first one simple raceme in this type peduncle is unbranched and it bears pedicellate flowers in an acropetal manner example crotalaria delphinium and radish the second one compound raceme or panicle so compound raceme is also called panicle in this peduncle is branched and each branch represents a simple raceme and possesses pedicellate and bisexual flowers example manchifera indica mango yucca gulmohar neem delonyx margosa let's see the diagrammatic representation of simple raceme and compound raceme see in simple raceme the above arrow mark shows it is showing indefinite growth on this they contains pedicellate flowers in acropetal manner the bisidal one compound raceme it is branched each branch represents a simple raceme carim inflorescence which is again classified into two types number 1 simple carim number 2 compound carim number 1 simple carim 
and unbranched peduncle have pedicellate flowers in an acropetal fashion but the lower flowers have long pedicels than upper ones due to this all flowers are brought to the same level example cassia gynandrops candytuft or iberis compound corym peduncle is branched and each branch represents a simple corym example cauliflower brassica or mustard and apple let's see the diagrammatic representation of simple corym and compound corym in simple corym peduncle grows indefinitely which is indicated by arrow mark and it contains uh, pedicellate flowers in acropetal manner the basal flowers contains long pedicels the upper flowers contains short pedicels due to this all are appear in same level in compound corym it is branched each branch represents a simple corym number 3 umbel umbel inflorescence again classified into two types simple umbel compound umbel simple umbel the main axis or peduncle is unbranched so the peduncle is short or condensed and all flowers appear to be arising from the same point in centripetal manner all flowers having same size of pedicels all the bracts of these flowers fuse to form in valkyrie example onion and centella the name of family umbelliferae is given based on this uh, umbel inflorescence next compound umbel peduncle is branched and each branch represents a simple umbel and possesses same size of pedicellate flowers example carrot and coriander let's see the diagrammatic representation of uh, umbel inflorescence simple umbel which is unbranched and uh, all the flowers having same size of pedicels and all bracts are fused to form uh, in valkyrie coming to compound umbel it is branched each branch looks like or uh, represents a simple umbel let's check diagrams carefully next one spike inflorescence spike inflorescence again classified into two types simple spike and compound spike simple spike an unbranched peduncle have bracteate sessile flowers we already discussed flowers without pedicels called sessile flowers is in acropetal fashion is called simple spike example acheranthus and adetoda compound spike peduncle is branched and each branch represents a simple spike example paddy varisa and amaranthus plant let's see the diagrammatic representation of a simple spike and compound spike see simple spike is bracteate sessile flowers all are arranged in acropetal fashion coming to compound it is branched each branch representing like a, a simple spike the fifth one catkin inflorescence catkin inflorescence is pendulous or drooping spike inflorescence and bears unisexual and sessile flowers in acropetal fashion example mulberry and uh, salix plant let's see the diagrammatic representation of catkin inflorescence in mulberry see the catkin inflorescence is uh, drooping which means inflorescence axis is very uh, uh, weak and it is hanging or drooping so that's about catkin inflorescence the sixth one spadix inflorescence spadix inflorescence again classified into two types simple spadix and compound spadix coming to simple spadix in this type so inflorescence axis or peduncle is unbranched and fleshy which bears both staminate male and pistillate female flowers in acropetal fashion inflorescence is covered by a fusion of bracts of all flowers called spathe example colocasia and arum plant the second type is compound spadix here in this type peduncle is branched and each branch represents a simple spadix example date palm coconut and banana in coconut 
all branches of this compound spadix covered by a single spathe but in case of banana each branch of compound spadix is covered by a individual spathe let's see the diagrammatic representation of simple and compound spadix colocasia shows simple spadix it is unbranched flowers are sessile all the flower bracts are uh, forms a spathe which covers inflorescence axis or peduncle in coconut and banana they shows compound spadix in coconut all branches covered by single spathe but in case of banana each branch of compound spadix covered by separate or individual spathe let's see the very last type of inflorescence is head or capitulum inflorescence head inflorescence is advanced type of inflorescence commonly seen in the family asteraceae or compositae in this the peduncle is flattened to form a receptacle which bears small sessile flowers called florets all the florets are arranged in centripetal fashion peripheral florets are called ray florets while central florets are called disc florets this head or capitulum inflorescence is also classified into two types number 1 simple head number 2 compound head coming to simple head it is again classified into two types homogamous head and heterogamous head example homogamous chrysanthemum it is made up of only one type of florets either all Agreed. ray florets which contains or all, all disc florets coming to heterogamous head it consists both disc florets and ray florets example sunflower and tridax the next one compound head it is branched head inflorescence example echinops let's see the diagrammatic representation of head inflorescence see the peduncle is condensed and forms a receptacle on the receptacle flowers are arising which are called receptacle scale so peripheral side they contains ray florets central side they contains disc florets they contains bracts and sessile flowers flowers are unisexual cymos inflorescence in this type peduncle shows limited or definite growth this definite peduncle terminates into flower in cymos inflorescence flowers will form in basi petal or centrifugal manner basi petal manner in basi petal manner new flowers are formed at the bottom or base and the relatively older flowers are formed at the apex or top or terminal region coming to centrifugal manner in this peduncle is condensed on this peduncle new flowers are formed peripherally and the older flowers are uh, formed at central region cymos inflorescence are of five types such as number 1 solitary cyme number 2 simple cyme or cymule number 3 monocasial or uniparasyme number 4 dicasial or biparasyme number 5 polycasial or polyparous or multiparous syme let's see the very first one solitary syme in this type terminal bud or axillary bud grows into peduncle or inflorescence axis and it is terminated into a flower so this type of inflorescence is called single flowered inflorescence solitary cyme again classified into two types axillary solitary cyme and terminal solitary cyme axillary solitary cyme in this type single flowers occurs in the axils of leaves which means arises from axillary bud example lazenaria china rose which is uh, hibiscus terminal solitary cyme single flowers occurs at the tip or apex or terminal bud of main stem and its branches example poppy lily datura let's see the diagrammatic representation of solitary cyme or single flowered cymos inflorescence the very first one china rose or hibiscus their flower arises from axillary bud so axillary bud present at axils of leaves so that axillary bud 
develops into floral bud floral bud grows into peduncle and terminates into single flower in datura terminal bud develops into floral bud then floral bud develops into peduncle and terminates into single flower simple cyme or cymel in this type also peduncle shows definite growth and terminates into flower later the peduncle forms two branches on both the sides and terminates into flowers so this inflorescence is also called three flowered inflorescence the example jasminium see the diagrammatic representation of cymule inflorescence the middle one is peduncle which is terminates into flower after that it forms two lateral branches at their basal region these two branches also terminates into flower finally this cymule or simple cyme inflorescence is looking like three flowered inflorescence after these lateral branches does not forms any branches they just appears like three flowered inflorescence the next one is monocasial or uniparasite in this type the main axis or peduncle terminates into flower a single lateral branch forms it to one side of the base of peduncle and itself also terminates into flower like this way every time they forms a branch and it terminates into flower again the basal region forms branch terminates into flower again the basal region forms a branch and it terminates into flower monocasial cyme are of two helicoid monocasial cyme all the branches formed on the same side in a sort of helix example hamelia heliotropium drosera scorpioid branches are alternatively born on the both the sides in a sort of scorpioid example ranunculus and solanum let's see the diagrammatic representation of monocasial sign both helicoid and scorpioid types in helicoid type peduncle terminates into flower it forms a branch at the base it terminates into flower like this way every time they forms branch and terminates into flower in one side but in case of scorpioid peduncle terminates into flower and forms a branch at one side it terminates into flower and it forms another branch at base in another side and it terminates into flower like that way in scorpioid type branches are formed alternative sides every time let's see the next type is dicasial or biparasite in this type peduncle shows definite growth and terminates into flower then it forms two lateral branches and those are also terminates into flower like this way every time they forms two branches at their base and they also terminates into flowers it's a continuous process example clerodendron ipomia sweet potato dianthus bougainvillea ixora teak musanda let's see the diagrammatic representation of dicasial or biparasite see the middle one is peduncle it terminates into flower and it forms two branches those are also terminates into flower and again they forms two branches at their base they also terminates into flower after that they also forms two branches continuously like this way so let's see the diagram for better understanding the very last one of cymose inflorescence is polycasial or polyparasite in this type peduncle shows definite growth and terminates into flower then it forms uh, many lateral branches and terminates into flowers like this way every time the branches terminating into flowers they forms many branches at their base they also terminates into flower it is a continuous process example nerium and kelotropis let's see the diagrammatic representation of polyparous or multiparous or polycasial cyme see in the middle peduncle terminates into flower it forms many branches at base they also terminates into flower they also forms many branches at their base they also terminates into flower like this way it is continuous process for better understanding you just check the diagram 
Special type of inflorescences. Special type of inflorescences are of three types, such as number one verticella aster, number two cyathium, and number three hypanthodium. Number one verticella aster. Verticella aster inflorescence generally seen in the family Lamiaceae or Labiate. In this type, a false oval formed at nodal regions of a stem called verticel. On this verticel, flowers primarily appear in dicasial cyme, but eventually they appear in monocasial cyme. Example: Leucas. Asimum and Salvia. Let's see the diagrammatic representation of verticella aster inflorescence. See, a false hole was formed at the nodal region of stem, which is called verticel. On this verticel, many flowers are present, primarily in dicasial sign, but eventually these flowers are appear in monocasial sign. For better understanding, you observe this diagram carefully. This type of inflorescence generally seen in Lamiaceae or Labiate family. Example, Leucas plant. The second type, Cyathium. This type of inflorescence generally seen in Euphorbiaceae family plants. In this type of inflorescence, the bracts of flowers fuse to form a small cup or conical shaped involucre. Cyathium inflorescence contains single, large, acclamidous female flower in the center, peripheral to this, which means surrounding this, many or numerous male flowers are present in centrifugal manner. In Cyathium inflorescence, each stamen considered as a male flower. Example, Euphorbia. Let's see the diagrammatic representation of Cyathium inflorescence. In this type, all the bracts of the flowers fuse to form a conical or cup-shaped involucre. Within the involucre, they contains a single acclamidous or knacked female flower present in center. Peripheral to this, surrounding to this, contains many male flowers. Here in this inflorescence, each stamen considered as a female flower. Let's see the very last type of uh, special type of inflorescence is hypanthodium inflorescence. This is fruit like inflorescence. In this type of inflorescence, entire peduncle or inflorescence axis is modified into fleshy cup or flask like structure in that structure many male flowers are present towards top or pore and many female flowers are present towards base in between male and female flowers hypanthodium inflorescence contains gall flowers which are sexually sterile flowers in hypanthodium inflorescence pollination occurred through the insect called blastophaga, example banyan tree and peepal plant. Let's see the diagrammatic representation of hypanthodium. See in the peak, it is a longitudinal section of hypanthodium. So in that, so a terminal region or a top region they contain spore. So below to that one, they contain many male flowers. And the female flowers are present at basal region. In between male and female flowers, they contain uh, gall flowers. See, the inflorescence is uh, looking like uh, fruit, but it is not fruit, it is a inflorescence. In this, pollination was occurred through a special type of insect called uh, blastophaga.